Hello again and welcome to another Morty and Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about tournaments. And I've got a bit of a bold hot take for you guys. Definitely expect to get a bit of lambasting for this one. But I don't think that super majors are the best, most important kind of 40k competitive event. I think that the humble RTT the one day three round tournament down at your local game shop is much, much more important. I know, I know what you're thinking, I've gone mad. I better back this up quickly. So without further ado, let's fix bayonets and charge right into today's episode. Attention guardsmen, my ever salty partner in crime, Admiral Simon has got an important announcement for you. This September and October, I am doing a charity walk along the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. We'll be raising money for two fantastic charities, our local hospice, Holton Haven, and also the Pink Ribbon Foundation that raises funds to combat breast cancer. As I hate camping, walking, and will be shitting in a bucket for four days, I will be particularly salty and would value any support you can give us. Please click the link below for our Just Giving page. Thank you very much. You heard the man, it's for a good cause, and you all know Simon from the Battle Reports. That's all for now, move out conscripts. So first things first, let's just quickly define what are the different kinds of 40k tournament. First up, we have the RTT. These are characterized by their one day, three game nature. The rest of the taunts we're going to look at are going to have more games and take place over more days. But the humble RTT tends to be the kind of event that you encounter at your local game club. Maybe you've got a local store that runs a monthly event and there's about 20, 30, maybe on a good day, 40 players that turn up. But the number one factor for the RTT is how long it is. It's one day and it's three rounds. Next up, we have the GT, the Grand Tournament. These tend to be two-day events taking place over a weekend that have five games. Now, in terms of the number of players, GTs tend to be a little bit smaller. You can have GTs with as few as 18, 20 people turn up. You can have GTs that are actually smaller than RTTs, but GTs do tend to have an upper limit. So anything that has between, let's say, 20 and 60, 70 players, that tends to be considered a GT. Thirdly, we have the Major. This is like a big GT. There's going to be two days worth of gaming and you're going to see a hundred plus people at these events and they are going to have five rounds minimum but often they will have a sixth round if they need to because of the amount of players that are at the event. And then we have the real big boys, the mega events, the super majors. These are defined by their sheer size. 200, 250, 400 players plus is not uncommon for a super major. What's interesting about super majors is they have a little bit more nuance to them than the regular majors. Whereas in a regular major, everyone might have to play the five or six rounds. In a super major, what you tend to find is the vast majority of players will play five games. They'll play three on the Saturday, they'll play two on the Sunday, but then the top performing players, maybe the top eight, sometimes it could be a larger pool, but the top performing players will have to then play an additional two to three rounds. So super majors can be a very grueling affair with up to eight rounds, but it only tends to be the top players that have to get into that battle of attrition, whereas the majority of people, a super major can actually be just like a really large GT. Now, currently, there is a huge amount of importance and weight given to the results of Super Major tournaments. And this makes sense. They are the biggest events. They often have some of the best players in the world that attend them, and they can be really cutthroat at the top tables. And truly, to win a Super Major, not only do you need to have a phenomenal list, but you also need to be a phenomenally good player. And when one of these players or one of these lists, especially if it's a bit of a curveball, wins a super major, it can send a bit of a shockwave through the community. People start trying to understand what is this new thing? How's it going to impact them? Is it going to shake up the meta as we know it? 
And a lot of top players will consider whether a faction is good or bad based on its ability to win a super major. So a good example of this is I was watching one of the recent Art of War live streams. And if you've not seen the Warhammer Art of War channel, definitely go and check them out. They do some really good content and they are a team of very, very, very good players. Got a lot of respect for them. And they were talking about Dark Elder. And they were saying how Dark Elder is in their minds like a bottom eight faction and they don't think that they're very good at the moment. But what's kind of funny and in many ways what kind of prompted this video is Art of War got a lot of pushback for this statement. Firstly, people referred to the Meta Monday data, the win rates of factions, and they were like, Dark Elder have been a 50, 55 plus percent win rate for months now. In fact, they're often in the top 10, top eight, and sometimes they make it into the top three for the factions with the highest win rate week in, week out. How can they be considered bad? And you had a lot of other people coming out saying, Dark Elder are really powerful. I really struggle against them. They always seem to be able to beat me. They're really strong, they're really fast, they're really punchy. I don't know how you guys can say they're a bottom eight faction. But here's the crazy thing. Both sides were right. The Art of War team saying Dark Elder are a bottom eight faction is absolutely right from their perspective because these guys are at the top of the food chain. They are going to Super Majors, they are winning them. They are winning events and winning games that many of us could never dream or even hope of doing. And if there's a faction out there that can't win a super major, then for them it's considered trash. Even if it can go four and one at every single GT, even if it can go three and oh, or two and one at every single RTT, it doesn't matter. If it can't win a super major, it can be considered trash. But on the other hand, the vast majority of people are never going to win a super major. They're never even going to try and win a super major. For the vast majority of people, what is important, what is actually impactful, what is actually going to affect their game and what they need to bring to win their games is not what wins the top super majors. It's what can dominate in the smaller local events in the events that they actually go to and attend. And this is why I say that RTTs are really, really important and they should not be overlooked because the most common kind of event is an RTT, not a GT a major or super major. And so for the vast majority of players, what factions are good and bad, what factions are important, are those ones which can dominate their local meta. And their local meta is going to be defined by their local RTT scene. Let me give you an example from my personal experience. And I know this is only anecdotal, I know there's very limited scope on this, but I hope it will serve as a good demonstration. In my local area, there's a regular RTT. It's where I actually do a lot of my torn after action reports. It's hosted every month, it's hosted at a shop near to me, just play, and they're really fun and well-organized events. Now in this local scene, there are two or three regular Votan players. And Votan has on more than one occasion, in fact, I would say quite often in the last few months, has actually won these local RTTs. Now, if you were to ask a top player, are Votan a top eight faction? They're going to say no, because Votan never win any super majors. They would argue they can't physically win a super major because they don't necessarily have all the tools in the toolbox. But for me, when I'm going to my tournaments, I need to take into account that I'm going to be facing Votan nearly every single time. I'm going to be encountering the local Eldar player every single time. And so even though neither of those factions are considered to be overpowered or considered to be top tier, when I'm building my lists, when I'm trying to construct something that can go all the way and potentially win this tournament, I need to take into account, how am I going to handle Votan? What do I do if someone turns up with three Hecaton land fortresses? Last RTT I was at, there were three Votan players, there were seven Hecatons. How do I deal with that? How do I deal with the local Eldar player who always likes to run 
lots of bikes. He's very fast, very maneuverable. He's always going to be getting that first punch in. How do I absorb that first punch? Because I'm going to have to take it. And so for me personally, and for, I would argue, the vast majority of the players that play 40k, both casually and competitively, it's not what can win the latest super major. What's most important, what is most impactful, and what is going to affect the most people is what is dominating your local meta. What is dominating your local RTT. Now, having said all that, I do want to try and make one thing abundantly clear. The point of this video is not to say that super majors are bad, that super majors are useless or unimportant. Not at all. Super majors are an incredible thing. The fact that we have such big events is awesome. The fact that there are players that can go eight games in a row, win the gold, and still have a brain at the end of that's not leaking soup is a phenomenal achievement. Okay, I couldn't do it. My brain would be mush if I tried to do that. Super majors are vital. Super majors are a very important indicator of what is currently the best thing in 40k. And often when you make a video like this, people will assume that if I'm saying I think RTTs are more important, then what I'm indirectly saying is that super majors are rubbish. And that's not what I'm saying at all. The point of this video is to try and highlight that RTTs are a very important part of our meta, are a very important part of our competitive scene. And something that I've noticed a lot of people do, whether they are people online or whether they're people I talk to in real life, they, they dismiss RTTs. They dismiss them as almost being not proper tournaments. But I think that's a bit unfair. I think that's wrong. And I think if you dismiss RTTs, you are dismissing a vital piece of the puzzle. And my number one motivation for this video was really to highlight the importance of local meta versus global meta. If you're someone who follows a lot of competitive stuff and you're starting to go to tournaments and you're starting to play more competitively, what wins? the latest Super Major, what wins the London GT, is probably not actually going to impact you. And you really need to be focusing on, until you start getting up to that sort of level of playing at London GT and playing in the top eight, what you want to be focusing on is what is winning your local events. Because I have seen it many times. This is not hyperbole. This is just not a scenario where I've made up my head and everyone claps or anything like that. I have seen it on multiple occasions where people have been completely blindsided at a local RTT or a local GT, an event they were using almost as practice for larger events. They were completely blindsided by some Johnny Rambo with this crazy list that's never been on anyone's radar, but he just cooked it up in his own beat lab and it's just taking the local meta by storm. If you want an example of this, I remember, this is a while ago, but it's just the one on top of my head. I remember in 8th edition, there's a time when Imperial Knights were really dominating and one of the best players in our area ended up getting paired round one at a big GT. It wasn't quite a major, but it was a big GT into someone using Space Marines. And Space Marines at the time weren't considered very good. And in fact, this guy had some crazy use that you never saw, like Assault Terminators. And we all just presumed that the guy with the Knights, who had, was very, very famous in our area, very infamous, not in a bad way, just he was a very, very like good player. We just assumed he was gonna roll over this Space Marine player. And then I remember uh, Matt coming up to me like 30 minutes into the round. And I was like, oh, yeah, you've, uh, you know, I'm still playing my game. He's like, oh, yeah, you've, you've won your, your game already. He goes, no, I lost. And I went, well, how did you lose that? And he went, just completely underestimated it. Comple was just not ready for facing Assault Terminators. Couldn't, didn't appreciate what they did. And he took me through it afterwards. And, you know, it, it basically what happened is he charged a bunch of his knights in early, just basically bounced off the storm shields. And then, then the assault terminator just completely smashed him. And he lost like two knights in his own turn or something insane out of like an army of like four. I know that's a very personal anecdotal story, but it always stuck with me as an example of what can happen when you don't take into account your local meta. But trying to bring this all together and summarize it, I think that Super Majors and other large 40k events are awesome, and I think winning one of those is a monumental achievement, and they are a great indicator of what can be considered like the best factions in 40k right now. However, I think that there's a bit of a tendency to dismiss RTTs. I think that's wrong, and they deserve a little bit more attention and a little bit more respect. Furthermore, I think that it's 
good if people take into account their local RTTs and that arguably they are much more impactful and are going to affect a lot more players than any Super Major because the vast majority of people are going to be playing at those size of events. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think that RTTs are very important and very impactful? Or do you think that there's just too much variance in those local metas and that really we need to look to the Super Majors to get that clearer picture? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patrons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. To a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Lord Pryor, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.